After over two years since its concepting, the Origin 100i series has finally arrived in patch 3.11. But is it just facade, or is there more beneath the skin? Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at all three variants in this upcoming patch. The 100i, the 125a, and the 135c. We'll explore not just its design, but its utility and handling characteristics as well to give you a full and well-rounded overview of what these ships have to offer. And then hopefully, by the end, you'll get a good idea of whether or not they're for you. So I hope you'll join me in stepping out onto the tarmac to take a look at this beautiful new ship. And if you think I did a good job by the end, make sure you let me know by leaving me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out and helps grow the community. At a glance, the 100i series has a clear relationship with its siblings, from the 300i all the way up to the 890 Jump. Much of the line work feels reminiscent of those ships, the color scheme, the palette, the inlets, and the fine details, they're all very consistent. But what strikes me the most about this design is its scale. The 300i's new design is nice, but at times it feels too tall feels a bit out of scale with my own size. And so the general feeling I get with the 300i is that it's not as efficient with space. Not so with the 100 series. It seems just the perfect scale to have what it needs to be a great little place to live on the go. Its low stance feels stable and assuring, but its low profile also helps to convey a sense of speed even whilst standing still. She looks fast, and I like that in a ship. Unlike the 100i's competitors, she also sports two size 3 hardpoints on either wing, which come equipped stock with two size 2 M4A laser cannons. Adding further to its damage potential is a hidden chin-mounted size 2 missile rack, which can sport up to four missiles. So the exterior looks great, well, at least in my opinion, but what about the interior? The 600i and even the 890 Jump both suffer from a lot of wasted space, which in my view doesn't really represent luxury. But what about the 100i? Through a wonderfully scaled side entry door, we step into a modest space. But its modesty does not mean a lack of luxury. The interior is still comfortably sized, and its very large canopy glass give you great views to the exterior whether you're lying in its fold-away bed or double-checking your ship systems while having a morning cup of joe before flying out to your next mission. And on the subject of ship systems, the Wonder Die series is also one of the only small ships of its size to give you access to the ship modules within the cabin. And just below that is its other party trick, an inboard cargo bay, if you can call it such. It's more of a cargo closet, maybe. Strangely, it's just big enough for someone to fit inside of it. I can imagine someone hiding inside of this cargo bay as a stowaway, popping out to scare the unsuspecting victim. But I'm not going to give anybody any ideas here in this video. Turning to the cockpit area, the bucket seat is nicely upholstered. It is fitting of an origin ship. Luxury, yet still business. Although it's not advertised as a racing ship, the bucket seat definitely conveys a sense of performance. Technically speaking, the cockpit is well arranged. It's also one of the first to have fully interactable buttons for nearly all the features in the ship. So for those of you who are very much into the sim part of Star Citizen, rejoice, this ship has quite a bit to offer. Which leads us to what it doesn't quite have to offer, and that's maneuverability. Well, its exterior would have you believe that it's a sleek racing ship that slips through the air of any atmosphere. It is, on the contrary, a very sluggish craft that feels heavy both in space as well as in thick atmo. This was the most disappointing thing about the ship overall. I did expect it to be a lot faster, and in fact it looks to be the fastest of all the starter ships available. 
That being said, I suspect that its roll rate, top speed, acceleration will all be adjusted before it's fully released in the PU by the end of this week, so I'm not too worried about that. Many people seem to feel the same as I. If it's any consolation though, you'll probably be flying for a lot longer than any of the other starter ships because it has its own ability to create hydrogen fuel, making it one of the more efficient ships in the starter lineup. But what about its superior siblings, the variants, the 125A Interceptor and the 135C Light Freight? Aside from the color scheme, the main difference between the 135C and the 100I is its rear cargo bay. This allows you to carry quite a bit more cargo than the stock version, and when in the future we get volatile cargo, this will come even more in handy. Personally, I really do like the paintwork of the 135C. It's a lot more striking than the stock white color scheme. And with its modules being the same as the 100i, having two coolers, one power plant, and one shield generator, it is a really solid linear upgrade from the 100i. And with it also having size 3 hardpoints, it makes it easy to upgrade its weapons to something a little bit more beefy. Like these Hurston Dynamics Energy size 3 weapons you see on the wings of this particular iteration. The 125A though, the light fighter of the trio, is quite a bit different from its two other siblings. Visually on its exterior, it sees several changes. Notably near the cockpit, you'll see an additional intake. This is likely to help cool the engines to be more efficient in combat. Vents also replace panels covering the engine on the rear, giving it additional cooling capability. And if you look closely at the wings, you'll also find some additional inlets. But it's not just about maneuverability and speed. It's also got a bit more of a punch. The rear cargo bay has been replaced instead by an additional hidden missile rack. Which brings the 125's complement up to six size 2 missiles to launch at your foes, making it quite a competent little fighter. However, as I soon found from my own experience with the ship, it still suffers from, well, let's say sluggish behavior. And again, as I said earlier in the video, I suspect this will be fixed, so I'm not too concerned about just how bad it felt in some scenarios. So then, are any of these or are all of these variants competitive with the other starter ships? Traditionally, there's always been the Mustang Alpha and the RSI Aurora MR. So does it compete with these? I think it does. Well, I would take the Mustang over the 100i series in a knife fight. I think that the Mustang would have a tough time getting up close and personal with the 100 series with its missiles. In other words, it could just lob a few its way and destroy the Mustang before it got close enough to use its size 2s and size 1s. But if I take into consideration that they're going to probably improve its maneuverability, then I would say the 100i might have an advantage over the Mustang with its firepower. Two size threes are no joke, especially in the hands of a skilled pilot. Compared to the Aurora though, the Aurora wouldn't really stand a chance against the 100i. What it has is utility, but even there I would say that, well, the 100 series has a bit more going for it than the Aurora MR. Not only does the base version have more interior space than the Aurora MR, but it also has more space to be used for boxes if you're doing box missions. And then when you take into consideration the looks of the 100i over the two other competitors, I, I think it really comes out on top here. So then, many of you may wonder if it topples the king of recommendations, the Avenger Titan. Well, the affectionately named Flying Penguin isn't going to win any beauty contests, it makes up for that in sheer firepower and utility with a much better storage. The Avengers cargo bay, though small, can carry a small dragonfly or a grey cat. The 135C's extended cargo bay, though, can't even carry the smallest vehicle that we have, and so it is still a little bit inferior to the Avenger, at least in its utility. But utility isn't the only metric by which one could judge the ship that they would like to choose. And so, although it doesn't take the crown away from the Titan for my recommendation, I still feel that the 100i is the most beautiful option of all the ships available labeled as starter ships. But the final decision is of course yours. My only hope is that I've given you enough information to make the right decision for you. And if I have, let me know down in the comment section below. 
And as always, I hope to see you guys next time.